Hey, you're at Steve Morris Engines and this is Steve Tech. What I was going to show you today, or actually what I am going to show you today, is I'm going to show you some uh, tune-up related problems. And actually it wasn't a tune-up related problem, it was just an uh, accident. But, all on this Hemi right here, on this uh, Pro Charged, that's the, uh, the Pro Modified, uh, the older version, the F3X 140 blower. On this uh, Noonan based engine, it has our uh, intake manifold and stuff on it, and uh, obviously our tune up and everything. But what I wanted, I can't show you because customer doesn't want this known what kind of horsepower it wants, so I'm not going to be showing you uh, any of the uh, video and dyno like I normally do with this because uh, when I show you the video of it all running and everything on here, and then I don't show you any numbers. And people get all mad at me and say, oh, oh what a useless video because there was no numbers on it. So I'm not even going to bother showing you that, but I am going to show you what a problem I just had uh, with this combination. And I'll show you exactly what happens, why it happens, and probably some stuff, unless you're in this pro modified type world or top alcohol world, um, you just don't really see. All right. So we'll come over here. And... What the problem was, was during dyno testing, that injector right there, I have these, if you look at it real close, these EV1 style fuel injectors, the clips come off quite often. I zip tie them on. And this stupid zip tie came off, and this connector right here came off. So, what happens there is, when that connector comes off, obviously that injector stops working. This cylinder gets half the amount of fuel as what it did before. Now, this is an interesting thing, and I don't know the exact chemistry. I don't know uh, exactly why. I just know it does. Uh, on methanol, when that injector or any injector, you cut the fuel in half, it is lean, yes, but on methanol, it detonates its brains out. On gasoline, if you had that injector come undone, if for some reason you had dual injectors on gas, which is rare, uh, but if you did and you had half the gas, it burns through the piston. Uh, here, it detonates and breaks piston stuff. Breaks pistons and connecting rod bearings. And if it went long enough or hard enough, it would knock out a connecting rod also. So, let me show you the piston here. So what you see is, this is the piston that came out of that hole that the injector clip came off of. All right. Now, normally, if your engine runs lean, a lot of times it uh, would burn a hole right through the intake pocket right here. It'd lift the ring land or something and just kind of burns. And it has a really very definite burn, torched off uh, look when it's on gasoline. Uh, on methanol, it looks looks perfectly normal looks great until you go over here to like that what it does is even though it's left the top ring alone well it's it's distorted and it's hurt the top ring so the top ring no longer seals real well and then it starts blowing uh, uh, compression and cylinder pressure past the top ring into the second ring well the second ring doesn't have enough material you see how thick that ring land is on the bottom there. It doesn't have enough material. And this is, before everybody gets all excited, we'll just change it. There's only limited things that you can do on these, okay, on any engine. So there's ring stack up. There's a lot of things that go on there. This is a very short stroke motor. This is only uh, three and uh, three and a uh, three and three quarter inch stroke crankshaft. So this thing is only 470 semi cubic inches. It's a small motor. So it already has a, uh, you know, a long rod, but and a reasonable piston pin height. Yeah, you can make the piston pin height all the way down here, but it makes the piston very heavy, very awkward, has a tendency to have a lot of rock, has other problems. Piston has a lot of rock, ends up having a bad ring seal, et cetera, et cetera. So there's all these little happy compromises that you have to make. Now, in a good running engine or in an engine that doesn't have an injector come unplugged, you don't have these problems, so everything's fine. But you can see right there, uh, when there is a problem, it will find the weakest link in the, in your system. And here, it's that ring. It's that ring land right there. Okay. So 
and detonation on methanol if it doesn't knock the head gasket out of it and cut a trough through your block and your head half inch deep which is pretty common too when they go real lean on methanol in boosted applications uh, this one gasket is a super stout has a really good uh, uh, ring and copper gasket and receiver groove so the ring and you know the, co the copper gaskets like right here has a ring and just goes pushes right through so it's really locked in real well I, I call it my SMX hoop that kind of stuff that's a top fuel hoop is what top fuel guys do but anyways uh, it didn't knock out the gasket so it put all the load into this piston but dead lean didn't burn methanol it just detonates when it detonates it blows the rings right ring package right out of it and just just totally destroyed that and then all of a sudden there's no ring control on it and it blows the vents off of the valve covers serious uh, serious stuff going on there that is why you will see there is nobody that runs well maybe there's somebody I don't care but typically I don't ever run vacuum pumps on these type engines because if something like this happens it don't matter if you got a vacuum pump on it or not it's gonna blow out all your oil seals it's gonna blow oil all over the place big catastrophe so that is why an HRA mandates big one and a quarter inch two one and a quarter inch valve cover vents going to a puke tank uh, typically, I can't remember what size the puke tank has to be but they have to be vented they do not allow you to have a unvented engine okay so back to this deal that's what happens to the piston but let me show you what happens to the connecting rod bearing so all this force detonation bang 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 bang, bang it is just killing parts it's killing this piston I mean we're talking in a matter of two seconds all right and probably where it went lean and had actually where it did go lean had problems because I could see where the clip came off it's, it's about one second about one second of runtime does that okay I'm gonna do a video and I'm gonna explain exactly what's going on in a matter of one second in an engine that's running 9,000 rpm someday I'll do that um, so then you take the the rod bearing oh and here's here's the top ring there's you can see there's there's nothing wrong with it outside of this free gap is bigger now and I'm sorry smaller so normally when this ring is brand new it's it's like that that's a free gap number when it's just sitting there free not on not in the cylinder bore obviously it's like this when it's in the cylinder bore when it's out here like this, this is a free gap number and as the ring gets a lot of heat in it and gets hurt and you'll see this on my ring video um, the ring gets hurt and it starts losing its tension it just kind of starts crushing down crunching down crunching down like that in free gap uh, so normally this thing was out here we measured it, it has a hundred fifty thousandths less gap here than what a brand new ring does or actually what the uh, piston did right beside it so these things are real easy we can leave the intake manifold on them pull the head off just like it does in top fuel or top alcohol or pro modified cars obviously what this is uh, outlaw pro mod deal and uh, so you can uh, pull the head off and we just did real quick pull all the pistons check all the rods uh, never even took the intake manifold off or any of the electronics so that makes it nice but uh, so that's the ring but this is what happens to your bearing and let me show you a comparison here all right so this is the bearing, rod bearing that we took out of there now what I want you to pay attention to is you see how it is let's look at this one forget about the surface finish forget about the little scratches stuff like that that's not what we're looking at see how wide this is you see how wide that is this thing has actually this is a soft bearing that we put in the connecting rods it's never gone through the oil film okay oil films are amazingly strong and there's a lot of science there math there uh, that's really pretty interesting but long story short it doesn't go through the oil film it has enough pressure and enough strength on that oil film that it actually squishes this bearing so this is the bearing that was beside the beside it and the other motor or I'm sorry and the other uh, uh, other piston and rod not squished out no problem it's not been thinned up this one that was detonating is squished right out it has so much cylinder pressure it actually beats this bearing and squishes out the material 
okay? It is designed to do that. That is what a V bearing is all about. That is what these bearings are all about, is to take this kind of abuse. Now, this is abuse because it detonated. Um, I'm not leaning on this engine hard enough to do this naturally. Um, but what a lot of these guys will do uh, in pro modified and top alcohol, nitro cars in particular, um, they'll take these bearings out and they know where their tune up is, how hard they're leaning on the motor, how much cylinder pressure they're making by if the bearings have no squish, i.e. cylinder pressure forcing that bearing, this is the connecting rod side, so the connecting rod is like, like this, and here's a crankshaft, and it is forcing it down, okay? So, <clears throat> uh, the more cylinder pressure, the more that bearing would squirt out. It gets to a certain point where there's no squish, no squish, and then all of a sudden it'll start squishing out when it gets really leaning on the, leaning on the tune-up quite a bit. Okay, that's the oversimplified version. Yeah, there's a, lot, a little bit more that goes along with that. But they will actually go into them and measure how wide or how much it has uh, beat that out with a bearing micrometer and to determine where they are on the tune-up. They'll go, yep, that's pretty normal. Oh, holy cow, that's got a bad cylinder. There's something wrong with it. We need to take some tune-up out of it, take some timing out of it, add some fuel, whatever it may be. So. Anyways, that is a uh, pretty, uh, pretty crappy deal. I had the spark plug. It, it's so crappy that I had the spark plug, and uh, after it got clipped, and I take the spark plug out. The spark plug was the strap was burned right off of it. I knew right away that I had a problem, and honestly, I got mad and I threw the spark plug away. So I don't have anything to show you <laughs> on the spark plug of a burned off strap, but just pretend that strap isn't even there. That's what it looks like. When that happens in a methanol motor, there is stuff going on and it's probably going to do something just like this where it'll just knock the ring lands right out of it and it's going to do this to your connecting rod bearing. Now, if you don't have these type of parts, you don't have this kind of connecting rod bearing, it's probably going to destroy the bearing, possibly, possibly go through the oil film and uh, destroy it, uh, spin the bearing. That's a possibility if you don't have this type of bearing and this type of motor. Um, piston wise, just TFV, it's just gonna do that. Um, there's no no fixing this unless you have some really weird combination that probably has a problem somewhere else. So, I thought I would show you this. That's a pretty interesting thing. Um, thankfully, I had uh, spare pistons already here for this. This is a brand new build that we were doing, or am doing. Uh, we're just finishing it up right now. Everything's great on it. Makes really good horsepower. Sorry, I can't show you what it's making. But uh, the simplest thing of that injector comes unclipped, and it causes that kind of problem in a second. So, anyways, I uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, issue of Steve Tech. And uh, remember to subscribe to the channel. Pass along if you think it's inter interesting. I'm Steve Morris. Have a great day.